definitely my favorite part about owning a diesel. From now until December 9th, 2020, you guys have an opportunity to win the GMC Duramax fully restored. So after this video, go ahead and head over there and check out some of the awesome stuff we have on the website. Okay, so now that we're back in the garage today, we're gonna to be talking about Duramax maintenance. So if you own a Duramax, it's extremely important that you watch this video from start to finish. Now this particular application that we're gonna be providing maintenance on is my 2007 Duramax. It's a 2500 HD 4x4, and this is gonna correlate pretty much for every single Duramax other than the L5P, which is the newer Duramax 6.6 liter version. But in this video, we're going to be talking about general maintenance, oil changes, how to check fluid level, as well as injector balance rates. I've covered this numerous times on my YouTube channel, so stay tuned for that. This is going to be the Launch 909E. This is the newest version, and I'll be showing you guys exactly how to check your injector balance rates and why that's important. Now, before we get into this video, make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button and also check your notification bell. For some reason, YouTube's been turning off your notification bell, so go ahead and go back to the main page of my channel and make sure that thing's clicked on or click it off and click it back on so that you can be notified first every single time I post a video. And I do appreciate everyone for watching these videos every single time I post it. And go over some of the basic things when dealing with maintenance. These are very expensive vehicles to own because of this. Definitely like to keep it simple. Something like an AC Delco fuel filter will be perfect for you guys. In my case, I do have a lift pump. Now there's a few options for you guys out on the market. Now here's the part number for the water filter. Lift pumps are always a great option for you guys. And it's something I highly recommend, especially air dog I really like their stuff and here's the fuel filter itself and of course you have your cat filters this is from Mark Decola diesel performance now today I'm going to be using Amsoil 15w40 and this is synthetic you don't have to go this expensive route I mean as you can see the price tag I mean it's astronomical how expensive this stuff is uh, you can also go with Rotella 15w40 you can do Royal Purple Shapers all kinds of stuff on the market I personally like the AMS oil myself, and this is what I've been running in the truck. Now, when doing an oil change, you want to use 10 quarts of 15W40 as well as an oil filter. I'll be using the PPE engine oil filter. It's a, a very expensive oil filter. It's $40. But what I like about it is it extends the life of the oil change itself because now you're adding an extra quart. So now I'm going to be going to 11 quarts of diesel oil instead of 10. Being said, I only have to do one oil change versus two. You see where I'm getting at. Every time I go to fill up, I always add an ounce of this fluid to one tank of fuel. That's what I always do. And it really does prolong the life of your injectors and keeps everything happy. And this is also a really good option too. I really like hot shot stuff. Also, I like Lucas as well. Leave in the comments what you guys like. Now I did talk about the launch system and I really enjoy this because it's not so expensive. These are marked about four, I believe 490. They're expensive, don't get me wrong, but the big fancy schmancy ones are way more expensive than this. And this is something that I like to use, especially when I worked at the dealership in the service department. These work really good for getting a good snapshot. But not only that, uh, if you own a Duramax and you wanna check injector balance rates, this is probably the quickest way that you guys can do this with the exception of owning an Edge CTS monitor. Now that I've explained the stuff that I use here, let's go ahead and get into it right now. I have a lot of upgrades on this truck in particular. This is a full HSP bundle kit air intake system. Uh, coupled to a Ryan's Diesel Service 68 millimeter uh, performance turbo. And then of course I have 60 over injectors and then the list goes on and on. What I'll do is I'll just leave a link in the description of all the modifications done to this truck right here, as well as coupon codes and links. Uh, if you're interested in actually modifying your truck, sort of similar to my build right here. First things first, if the truck's been sitting for a while, I'd say overnight or even a couple days, it's always a good idea to go ahead and just squeeze that hose and make sure that it's not rock hard. If it's rock hard, it's a good indication that you could have had a failed head gasket. So not trying to freak you out, but it's always a good opportunity before you start that truck up, go ahead and grab that hose and just squeeze on it and make sure that it's not super hard, okay? All right, go ahead and pull off your oil cap. If you're doing an oil change, it's one of the first things that you wanna do is pull this off because it's going to allow the oil to drain even faster. So this is your engine oil dipstick tube. We're gonna go ahead and pull that out. And here is your transmission dipstick tube. The best way to check that is to drive the truck, get it at engine temperature, and then let it sit in the driveway for about five minutes or so. And once you've done that, go ahead and pull the dipstick while the motor is running. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in after I've checked that. Of course, if you're not doing an oil change, the truck's gotta be sitting you know, for a good amount of time for that oil to sit 
all the way to the bottom of your oil pan. Of course, pull your engine oil dipstick, wipe it off. Put it back in. Just check it. It's pretty simple. You see the F line, which is full. You got your 16 millimeter. A little drain pan on the bottom to catch it. Go ahead and clean the surface of this pretty nice. Once you've installed your oil filter, I like to use a rag. Go ahead and turn it hand tight. Don't use the filter wrench to tighten that because you got to let the O-ring do its job. If you over tighten that, you're going to start seeing it leaking right here on the bottom. I've seen this numerous times, so that should be good to go. Wipe it off. Just a side note here, check for oil shavings on the end of this bolt right here when you pulled it out in order to drain your oil. Make sure you guys inspect your engine oil. It's always a good thing to do. Uh, what you're looking for is really thin oil. If it's really thin, then it's very possible that you guys could have fuel and oil. Uh, just make sure that your engine oil is good. You're looking for metallic swirly looks. I mean, it could be, you know, metal shavings. But in particular, also, you're also looking for fuel and oil. So make sure you guys check that. It's time to pour our Amsoil 15W40 synthetic. Again, it's not the end all. It's something that you don't have to use. It's pretty expensive. Like I said, I recommend something like Rotella. It's not a bad brand. So if you're not using a high capacity oil filter, like myself, the uh, extra quart, you're only gonna use 10 quarts of oil for this job here. All right, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and just let all the oil settle into the motor for a few minutes and I'll go ahead and pull the dipstick and make sure we're all topped off. If we're not, I'll put a little bit more in there. So that's it for that right there. You guys can see we're all topped off, we're good to go. So let's move on to the fuel filter. So as you guys can see, I don't have one anymore. I put a cap over it because I have a lift pump. And as you guys can see where my fingers at, I have a billet bleeder screw right here, it's red. I also have them in blue. Check out my website, I sell those. And the reason why I do that is because if you look at the factory housing, it does come with a plastic one from the factory. And over the years of replacing these fuel filters, eventually uh, that'll start to strip on you, especially right here with the flathead. I never use a flathead screwdriver on the plastic. Uh, because of course it, it, you'll have that potential of stripping that I always use a 13 millimeter socket Basically all you're doing is you're just gonna unscrew the fuel filter from the housing itself and then put a new one on Of course with the new o-rings go ahead and loosen the screw prime this until you start seeing fuel come out And then once you start seeing fuel come out go ahead and tighten it and then press it a few more times to Make sure it's nice and hard Pickle the key a few times and you should be good to go So moving on here. I'm gonna go ahead and drain my water separator and as you guys can see, you're gonna see some water coming out of that field that's draining right now. Really not a lot because I actually replaced these not too long ago. As you guys can see right here. It's always a good opportunity. Open that thing up, drain out some of the water that's coming out of this filter right here. Go ahead and screw that back on. Uh, I am not using the fast filters. I'm not a big fan of the fast filters. I did a video on it and why. Uh, they're just a lot, very problematic. Uh, I actually like the Caterpillar filters myself and again, uh, buddy of mine, Mark Decola, he sells these on his website, um, MDD Performance, uh, so go ahead and check him out. But I'm thinking about eventually moving up to something different, like an AirDog 165 instead of this fast 150 that I'm using. But either way, lift pumps are always a great option for diesels, and again, I recommend them highly uh, because it's not only going to separate the water and the dirt, but it's going to separate the air from the fuel, and it's really going to keep those injectors lasting a lot longer, especially for the first generation. 6.6 liters, so your 01s to your 2004 uh, Duramaxes. It's always a really great option, but again, um, highly encourage you guys to invest in a lift pump for your diesel. Moving right along, as you guys can see, I just picked the front end of the truck up. And the reason for that is because the front end of these trucks are very problematic with the steering components in the front. We all know that. So it's a great opportunity to go ahead and check out those CV shafts. Make sure the boots aren't leaking as well as the front wheel bearings. Uh, just make sure you guys rock it back and forth, left to right. Uh, make sure there's no play in those tie rods. But basically what I mean is just rock it up and down, left and right. Just make sure there's no play. You'll feel a void there if you're doing, if you're rocking it left or right, you will feel a void, you know, if there's uh, any sort of play whatsoever. And it's very possible that it could be a bad tie rod, either an inner or an outer. 
So shake that front end down, make sure there's no play. It's always a good idea to invest in some really heavy duty tie rods on these trucks. I think it's a must, it's so important. I'm running the PPE stage three HD tie rods. And then I'm also running kryptonite upper control arms as well as the wheel bearings. And these wheel bearings are indestructible. I really think that they're the best on the market, um, especially if you're running offsets or crazy heavy gigantic rims like myself and big old tires. I just think it's a really good investment. So uh, I think kryptonite makes some really good products. And of course, when you're doing this, make sure you guys hit the U joints as well on the drive shaft if you have them. And then just, just hit every greaser while you're already at it. But I just hit every single greaser on the front end. It's so important you guys go to the drive shaft, the rear drive shaft, and the front as well. If there's any greaser in those U joints, make sure you hit those up as well. Another thing I wanted to highlight on this video right here, this is called a mass airflow sensor. And this is in the ductwork of your actual air intake system. Every truck has one, every vehicle has one. But when you remove this right here, you're gonna see these little, a little sensor right inside there. Go to your auto parts store and pick up some mass airflow sensor cleaner. It's just a little spray. Go ahead and clean that out. Let it dry for a little bit and put it back in here and set these screws back in. I've actually seen the truck run better. I'm talking more responsive and better fuel economy by just cleaning that little sensor. Now I do have the HSP coolant tank, but make sure that your coolant's topped off as well as your brake fluid. Go ahead and inspect that. Make sure it's not all nasty and dirty. All right, so now that we're under the truck, as you can see, we have the legendary transfer case built by Kodiak Truck, Mark Bendler himself. You guys can pick one of these transfer cases up. I'll leave a link in the description where you guys can pick up one of these transfer cases and then use my coupon code TRUCKMASTER. It's gonna save you 5% on these transfer cases and they're so awesome to have because he actually engineered the main shaft. It's like a three bearing design and it really allows it to spin a lot better than the factory one. So I would consider this a built transfer case. So definitely consider this. Here is his number right here and let him know I sent you if you guys are interested in these. But more importantly, when you're doing the maintenance on your transfer case, this is gonna be your drain right here and this will be your fill in order to check the level go ahead and just remove this bolt right here make sure that it's full all the way up to here this mark right here and if it's not go ahead and just put some fluid in there and this fluid right here you're going to be using 5w30 i would recommend that if you're going to be using 5w30 in your transfer case which you absolutely can go ahead and drain all of your fluid out just go to the auto parts store pick up some mobile one i like mobile one synthetic 5w30 it's pretty inexpensive as well I believe it's two quarts, don't quote me on that one. And <laughs> go ahead and fill it up right here. Depending on how much travel you're doing with your truck, it's always a good idea to rotate your tires once every oil change. So I'm actually gonna have my son do the tire rotation. Come on, man. <laughs> Couple more years, guy. You're gonna be in here with me, trust me. But really quickly, let me explain to you guys how to do a tire rotation. It's not as simple as just taking the rear tire and moving it to the front, and then the front tire and moving it to the rear. The way you do it with a rear wheel drive vehicle is you take Again, it's called the inverted X. As you take both tires, that is gonna to go to the front right, and that tire is gonna to go to the front left on the driver's side. And then your front tires are gonna go straight back. That's how you properly do your tire rotations on a rear wheel drive vehicle. Now, I didn't cover the front and rear differential, but it's gonna be the same process with the transfer case. Go ahead and just remove that fill bolt from the top. If you see some oil coming out of that hole right there when you remove the top bolt then of course it's full but if not go ahead and just top it off put the fill bolt back in and you're good to go i know i'm jumping all over the place but one more thing to do once you put your wheels and tires back on i like to go 150 foot pounds and always use a torque wrench when you put your rims and tires back on all right now that we've explained all that let's go ahead and get into the cab and i'm gonna show you guys exactly how to check for injector balance rates All right, so now that we have the truck running, I'm gonna be using my Launch 909 Echo or E. This scan tool is pretty nice, and I'll leave a link in the description if you guys are interested in picking up one of these awesome scan tools. During my maintenance procedures here, I always like to check just to make sure everything's good. It's very simple. Even a simple scan tool that you plug into your OBD2 port, which is right where I showed you where I plugged it in. But what I like about these scan tools right here is not only can you read and erase the codes, but you can also check additional things. And also you can do brake bleeding procedures. So the way this works is you just go ahead and click the ECM. And then I like to go to read data stream and then engine two. And what you're seeing here is all the balance rates on all eight cylinders. So just hit okay. And then what you're gonna pick up here is very important. I see a four or plus four or anything out of that spectrum. So a five, six, seven, eight, whatever. It means that your injectors are definitely going to need some attention. 
in my case, I'm good to go. I definitely want to keep my eye on cylinder one right here because it's showing a three. And then of course right here, uh, cylinder five. So this is a big benefit of why it's important to have a good scan tool to check things like this. And then on top of that, I always like this function right here. This is really cool, the reset function. And then um, this is injector coding in case I install brand new injectors. I did a YouTube video on how to install injectors and I showed how to, how to code your injectors. So that's really neat that this scan tool right here has that function. And of course, oil reset, which I'll do right now. The other way to do that is to turn the key over with the engine off and then hit the gas pedal three times and then go ahead and just turn the key off and then it'll actually reset your engine oil life. So there's some good practices that I pointed out in this video of how to properly maintain your Duramax and I hope we learned something. And then one more thing I'd like to add, an Edge CTS 2 or 3 monitor is a very good or beneficial way to check injector balance rates versus using a scan tool, but I like the options of being able to do this. Not only that, it's got the DPF regen and all that other stuff. That's basically it. Leave it in the comments below. I know I missed a ton of stuff but there's just a good rundown or a good snapshot of what to look for. But leave in the comments below what I missed, what you guys check for, what kind of oils you use, just load it up. If you leave it in the comments, it's really gonna help somebody out tremendously. And let's just go ahead and continue that dialogue down there. Hey, make sure you guys subscribe and again, hit that notification bell. And I do appreciate all of your support. We're gonna continue to plug away some more amazing, awesome footage, more upgrades with the Wife Max as well as Old Red here. And of course, we're giving away the 04 fully restored GMC Duramax that we built on the channel. And if you guys are interested in winning that, go to the truckmasterdiesel.com website. And every $1 spent on that website will get you guys an automatic entry. So that's it. I'll see you guys on the next video. Stay tuned.